Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Big Fat Bunny. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to talk about if you plan to travel to mainland China, there's a few things you should be aware of. We're going to talk about from these few points. Firstly is visa. Do you need a visa to travel to China? And, sec and secondly is the exchange rate. And third, what about the temperature? Northern China and southern China. Okay, and the fourth is Chinese air actually is not that bad. So don't worry about this. I'm going to talk about it from these few points. If you don't have enough time, uh, you can come back listen to me later. This video is going to take a little bit of time, so going to be a little bit longer video. Roughly, I would think about half an hour. So you'd better have a cup of tea or coffee or water next to you. Or if you rush to work, maybe not a good idea to listen to this video today. And the fifth is a taxi. Taxi prices in China. Is that cheap? And number six, I'm going to talk about Chinese underground. Is that crowded, the train and the high speed trains prices like that? And the seven, I'm going to seven points. The next points I'm going to talk about if you don't speak Mandarin, will that be a problem? And next one, number eight, what about Chinese food? What if you don't like Chinese food? Is there any English food, English restaurant over there? And number nine is if you go to a place of interest, do you need to bring your passport and the things to be aware of? And the next one, number 10, if you are in trouble, you want to come contact the Chinese local police, what I will suggest you to do. And the next one, number 11, if you are ill, you need to call ambulance, which number you should call. And number 12, what about the Chinese toilet? Do you need toilet tissues? I have been asked so many times, like when people travel to China, do they have to bring their own, own toilet tissue? Okay, number 13, mainland Chinese friendly or not? Okay, and number 14, the last one. Is there is a lot of community in China in the, every morning when you wake up. Okay, I'm gonna talk about from these 14 points. From number one, do you need a visa to go to China? Okay, that depending whether you go there to work, study like overseas students or for tourism. If you go to China for work and a study, yes, you do need to apply a visa. They, uh, you need to contact the local Chinese embassy or you can use travel agencies to do it for you. But of course, if you go to Hong Kong or Shanghai, some certain places, you better look it up on the internet or ch contact, of course, contact the Chinese embassy will be, be the best solution to make sure you do need a visa, you do need to apply a visa before you board the plane because China is not the kind of country you could board your plane, land it over at a Chinese airport, have a visa stamp, have a stamp at the airport. You have to go to the embassy first, have a kind of little sticker stuck to your passport, that kind of visa. Of course, if you go to Hong Kong, I believe now is 2018. Depending on where you come from, some certain countries can stay in Hong Kong for two days without a visa or even or might, might be even longer. I'm not sure because I haven't been to Hong Kong yet. I come from mainland China. Okay, and number two, the exchange rate. I remember like 20 years ago, one pound, one English pound, you can get about 16 yen or RMB, that's the local Chinese currency. Most people call it kuai as well, like one kuai, like one pound uh, to a Chinese standard. A bottle of water, maybe three kuai. Uh, so now one pound is roughly about eight RMB. So has been halved, yes. Num number three, we're going to talk about the temperature in China. If you look at the uh, Chinese map, it's got a river in the middle, looks like kind of a shape like uh, this, okay, like uh, that, like a kind of a big mountain that is called the Yellow River. It divided China to northern of China and south of China. So the temperature 
uh, if you don't stay in Hong Kong or further down, because further down is much much more mild than in the north. In the north, if you go to further north, because we are next door, kind of um, uh, adjacent to uh, Russia, that can be really cold. I haven't been there yet, but uh, I heard in winter there is like an ice festival. It's rather beautiful. Uh, winter time there can reach minus 30 I believe if you go to Hong Kong Hong Kong uh, can be much hotter maybe four seasons can be quite mild uh, summertime in China mainland China above the Yellow River or few cities few provinces down Chinese is divided the map is many provinces uh, most of the provinces in China is quite cold in winter my i can remember is about minus 10 or minus 9 that's above average so the coldest month is starting from uh, november to february if you don't like the cold very much i don't suggest you to visit china during this time this period of time and of course the summer season normally start from May, May can get in very hot in mainland China as well, can be May to August, the hottest time in China can reach 40 centigrade, that is very hot. In China we are used to use uh, centigrade, we are not Fahrenheit, so I'm not sure 40 centigrade is how much Fahrenheit, and also Chinese when you measure things we use centimeters, meters rather than foot. So we can say someone six foot tall in England, but in China could be 1.8 meters. Okay, 180 centimeters. That's just something different to use. I believe we and America is the same. We use the same thing only in UK. We use foot and Fahrenheit, but it's not a bad thing. <laughs> not a bad thing. So most of the Chinese apartments we have tall apartments because we are highly a popu we are highly populated we have hot summer you got to if you live there you make sure please make sure you buy an air conditioner because if you have a fan the fan will blow some warm hot air to you you honestly couldn't sleep you got to buy an air con unlike in UK generally average household wouldn't bear air con but a fan will do because the UK is not that hot. Most of the places in China have four seasons okay and the number four we're gonna talk about pollution. Yes that's right. China do you know it's not that bad. I mean if you watch some programs in your country of course this all oh, Chinese is highly popu populated polluted but actually guys please don't worry it's not that bad of course it cannot compare to UK or Switzerland or the mountains beautiful mountains full of we have very beautiful places in China like this as well but because imagine it's a very big country and the Chinese have a lot of factories we make things we do export so of course it's gonna be a little bit polluted but please don't worry about it if you don't believe me you can watch where is Poppy where's Poppy I watch a lot of her videos she this girl is amazing she is there the air quality actually is not that bad because sometimes when you watch tele people exaggerating things i'm not saying it as good as uk or as good as some places in the world but literally it's generally speaking honestly speaking it's not that bad unless okay. you go to some industrial area if you are a buyer you buy some uh, metals you buy some uh, some hinges for the doors you're visiting the local factory try to contact the factory to make it it could be worse than the uh, place of interest like Beijing Shanghai if you just go there not as a buyer you visit a place of interest believe me you're gonna love it it's not as bad as some some people said it can be okay and the number fifth the fifth one is i'm gonna talk about the taxi prices 
taxi prices in China can be vary. It depending on which city you are going to. We if you go into Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou or Hong Kong, it can be more expensive than any other cities. But of course, it's I I I think genuinely for me, it's still much cheaper than UK taxis. And nowadays in China, if you download a、uh, app, you can、uh, contact the、uh, taxi firm through the app. Or I、uh, what I normally do is I don't I don't rent a car to drive in China because no points doing so. Chinese traffic is rather crowded, so rush hours in China. Don't you even think about going out? With your own car because it's really really bad. It may take you twice as long. You you would better you would better take the buses or take underground. It's much quicker. But taxi fares can be can quite be. cheap. If you go into Beijing or Shanghai, most effective way to travel if you near a tube station and underground, you just go to the underground by take the travel by underground is much quicker. Or if you prefer buy a taxi, sometimes you you can stop a taxi at Chinese cities. You don't have to pre-book them, but pre of course pre-book them will be much ideal through the app or through your hotel rep. Tell the receptionist, please let them phone them up. Let them to phone the taxi firm for you. That's what I did last time because I have been waiting for forty minutes. No taxi stops. Then. I went to the shopping center. They told me nowadays they have been booked. So what I did is I phoned the receptionist at my hotel. He was a he he was really really nice. He he contacted a taxi for me to pick me up. If you landed in Shanghai, oh, you want to go to your hotel? I would suggest to you not to use the taxi there. But it's up to you. What I found out is rather. Easy to do is I before I travel I go to、um, Chinese website or ask me because or ask any Chinese friends to do it for you because we could check it out which which line can take you to your nearest hotel. Then when you near the city center, you call a taxi to go there. Because the last time when I went there, I found out there is seven. Or even more, or nine, nine lines, nine bus lines that can take me to the airport. Of course, the nine bus lines in Shanghai can take me in di- different parts of Shanghai. When I arrived there, close to my hotel, I organized a taxi or called the receptionist to call a taxi to pick you up. Okay, and of course, when you book your hotel in China. It will be much cheaper. You book it in advance or through booking buddies like、uh, C Trip, C Trip, or some kind of website like this. But if you know some Chinese local Chinese people living in your country or your friends with them, please call them. We are very happy to help you to find out to book it for you. Okay.、Uh, oh, I forgot to talk about roughly how much it cost.、Uh, If you buy a taxi, I would say thirty pounds, about two hundred forty yen,、uh, RMB. So within about three hundred yen, so thirty or forty pounds, you should reach to the city, no problem. Roughly that. If you call a taxi to visiting your hotel, should be in the city. It should shouldn't cost that much. The、um, the starting fee is about. Two pounds, I would say, or one one pound fifty pence. Then every mile, or every I'm not sure how they calculate this, but rather rather, rather cheap. It's not that expensive. Okay, and number six, I'm gonna talk about the Chinese underground. And again, Chinese underground like London. If you take the underground like nine o'clock, five o'clock, rush hour six o'clock in the evening, it's gonna be really crowded. And that is on certain lines, like some Central Line, Big Blue Line, or if you go to the big、uh, underground city like Bank, you go into Waterloo. That kind of certain line gonna be really busy. So I suggest you maybe avoid the rush hour. But guys, it's not that bad. It's not that crowded as it's not that crowded at all. Similar to London Underground, I would say, 
very very much the same okay. and it's very convenient to take the underground to everywhere you would like to go and also you can take trains and high-speed trains in China if you travel to other cities for example you are in Shanghai you go to a near, nearby city called Hangzhou very beautiful and Suzhou is famous for its gardens you might be able to take the train the train is very cheap as well but avoid the Chinese Spring Festival because Chinese Spring Festival we call it Chuanjie that is like a Chinese Christmas at that time roughly every year is different because Chinese Spring Festival is according to the moon the lunar date so every year roughly is about January or early February at that time it's, the train can be very crowded you better off to pre-book it or just avoid that kind of time to travel to China but again if you happen to be there nothing to worry about it's really really easy travel to longer distance for example you from Beijing to Shanghai to Guangzhou to long, longer distance of cities if you buy the high speed trains I bought it once is about 780 yen so it's about 80 pounds I would suggest oh, about 100 pounds actually one to eight that's right it's almost the same as an air, air, air ticket but it's just easy for me to take the train because if you buy an air ticket you land at the airport then you have to take another taxi to reach the place you wanted to go so I prefer to take the train so in China the train you got high speed train and normal train normal train can be much slower if you want to enjoy the view to you can take the norm, normal train to just take much much longer high speed train is quicker similar okay. similar program to UK's train it's set out on a tight schedule so don't worry you won't wait forever or being cancelled if it's been cancelled they'll organize something else for you but that is very rare things like this okay number seven if you don't speak Mandarin depending where you go if you go to big cities again of course like Hong Kong or Shanghai or Beijing most young people speak English but don't worry about it if you go to mainland China even if you speak Mandarin, it can be different. We call it dialects. People in Canton area like Hong Kong, Guangzhou, they speak Cantonese. Other place provinces in China is not Canton province. We speak our own dialect. Of course, I would. if you don't speak Mandarin, you wouldn't tell the difference between dialects. Even for Chinese people, it can be confusing, like Scottish English or in English English or Irish English that's the same we speak dialects as well so if you don't speak English uh, oh sorry if you don't speak Chinese Cantonese or Mandarin I would suggest you to do something like this this is a genius idea I would suggest you have many piece of papers like this uh, uh, of course ask a Chinese person to do it for you or simply go to Google do the translator thing then print it off please like where is the toilet please then you then you have some Chinese words next to it the same if you travel to Thailand you travel to Vietnam the same thing will happen you either ask a, v a local person to help you but before you travel I mean you write English first so you know what this piece of paper represents you tie it off uh, then take a picture tie it off stable them together put them into your wallet with your passport because not everybody speak English in Asia countries so what if you just want to go to the loo and nobody understand you that just in case and also if you are vegetarian you go to a local Chinese restaurant you do the same just say I did it for my colleague before I am a vegetarian then next next line will be the Chinese translation to this I don't eat any meat uh, I can eat some fish and some tofu but no meat thank you things like this or, or can you show me the loo please will you please take me to the loo will you be kindly to take me to the toilet when you done this staple them together and also use your mobile mobile take a picture of every 
every every paper every piece of paper just in case this piece of paper kind of gone missing okay that's what i do when i travel abroad and if you, you don't speak any of the local languages that turns out to be very very hard some of my english friends they are not a huge fan <laughs> huge although chinese takeaway is everywhere in every country i believe um, but not every Everybody love Chinese food. I do. I'm a huge because I'm Chinese. Of course, I'm a huge. I'm a huge fan of Chinese food. But if you are not, you are the kind of person prefer English food. That's absolutely fine. Because in China, we have McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut's everywhere, everywhere. Unless you went to a countryside, you went to uh, some kind of rural places. In Chinese cities, even one street, sometimes you can find two KFC or two McDonald's. But what I found out, the tastes of Chinese local McDonald's or Burger oh, no, there's no Burger King. I haven't seen any Burger Kings in China. Oh, that's right. But the tastes of a KFC burger and a KF uh, and a McDonald's burger can be slightly different to the ones you have been eating in your own country because they have to adjust their flavor kind of to be acceptable by Chinese people just like the Chinese takeaway in UK for example I personally I, I would I would prefer some fish cooked in Chinese soy sauce sugar that glazed Chinese fish but if you sell that kind of fish to English customers probably no one would buy it that that will be the same theory so they have to adjust their recipe to be more acceptable by local Chinese people but you are like it there because plenty plenty of uh, or Italian restaurant if you like spaghetti but spaghetti you like carbonara don't worry about it just ask the receptionist or use your 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 mobile oh another important thing i forgot to mention is you cannot use youtube or google in china but if you go to some certain business areas like i can't remember the building's name in china in shanghai or hong kong you can you i'm not sure whether you can use in hong kong talk about mainland china in some certain areas you can go to google or if you in a business building you can nothing wrong with your mobile please don't worry about the internet it just you cannot use it but if you really want to use it what you should do is you go to the uh, uh, mobile shops to buy something called vpn or vnp but they, they will know just tell them you want to go to youtube you want to use google uh, you can buy a few months membership or a year i'm not sure but it's rather rather cheap after you've done that you can log on to google or youtube the nine nine point the ninth points i'm gonna talk about if you go to a place of interest for example you want to visit in the summer palace the forbidden city or oh, you could or you want to buy a train ticket or buy a aero ticket airplane tickets air tickets you need your passport with you guys because uh, don't leave your passport in the hotel put it next to uh, maybe buy something like next to your little pocket thing around your waist that's what i normally do and uh, number 10 if you are in trouble if you kind of unlucky you kind of in trouble you need to call the police the number is 110 i would suggest you to still call your chinese friends or contact someone you know who can speak english of course somebody you trust for example the receptionist of the hotel let them to do their call for you because not everyone speak chinese it will be much easier and much quicker you tell someone speak chinese what has happened let them to phone the police for you rather than phone yourself because highly chances they're not gonna understand you number 11 is rather important china is one of the safest country in asia that i know of i remember a few years ago there was a, a british tourist being killed on the beach i think it's in thailand of course murders happens everywhere i'm not saying in china there's no murders no killing no 
everywhere, even every country in this world that that is happening. But in China, guys, it's really rather safe. My colleague was saying to me, so, oh, you should be careful when you go back home because I heard some. Thank you very much for your advice. But uh, that, that was happening in Thailand beach. I mean, China, but thank you very much though. They said, oh, don't speak to uh, my colleague. Oh, don't talk to strangers. No. They're so nice to me. I think I'm quite lucky have have such a nice friends. But although some of them might not know I'm Chinese, they might think I'm Thai because we, we look kind of similar. <laughs> I will look kind of similar. That, but that's one thing I want to tell you guys. If you go to China to travel, you are a girl by yourself, don't worry about it. It is really, really safe. But of course, I wouldn't suggest you go to clubbing like at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 o'clock in the morning, go out to a strange place. But, but it's rather safe. Nothing to worry about, but still, to be safe, to be safe, you better head home early. In China, midnight, some of the restaurants will still be open, will still be places still open, still be some people in big cities, in the cities. But if you in countryside, wouldn't necessarily be many people. But of course, to be your own safety, do not, please do not head out too late. Only because you get lost or the building at night, you might lose your sense of direction. But if it's like early mornings, like 9, 10, 11, it's just people everywhere and the people are really friendly. It is, I'm not just seeing this, it is one of the safest places, the countries in Asia. Okay. And then our next one, if you need a hotel, you kind of in call ambulance, you need to dial one two zero, and of course still find someone speak English for you to diet for you. And number 12 is, do you need to bring toilet tissues with you when you are in China? Yes, you do. Your hotel rooms, your hotel rooms going to be plenty of toilet rooms there. So don't worry about this. But if you go out, head it out to, to, for a day, for example, to see the Great Wall, that's going to be a public toilet area. I would strongly suggest you to bring your own toilet tissue with you. Okay. And the number 13 is people friendly in China, mainland China, mainland Chinese are we friendly? Yes, we are very friendly. I would say 90% gonna be friendly. So unlike some people, maybe abroad, they just bit tired, they, they may appear to be not as friendly. But generally speaking, mainland Chinese, Chinese people, Chinese people are friendly. Okay, so don't worry about that. And number 14, there are a lot of uh, community a lot of activities in the morning for Chinese. If you happen to be a Chinese park or you near a Chinese school, every morning the Chinese school students, for example, I used to live in a hotel kind of near a school, I can hear them every morning they'll get up to do like little soldiers in lines. They all wear the same uniform. They're doing morning exercise. Okay, it's rather entertaining because we see that as a kind of a discipline, everybody have to do it. If you go to a Chinese local park, there are the people singing, playing instruments, singing Beijing opera, or playing Tai Chi. That's just, or, or in the evening could be some uh, elderly ladies dancing there, because there's a lot of communities. If you want to join, you are free to join. You don't have to pay a membership, it's all free. Okay, that's all I can think of traveling to China. This 13 or 14, this 14, 15 points. Okay, that's what, what I could think of. If you have more things to ask me about China, I would be very happy to help. And I do hope you like this video and do forgive my Chinese accent. <laughs> But I hope you understand me. I think you should be. Okay, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Enjoy your trip to China. You will love it.